Good morning. It's good to see everyone out this morning to receive from the Lord's Word and Sacrament. If you have your announcement, she'd ask you to please take it out for a couple brief announcements here today. I just want to make a brief mention. Following the second service today, we're having a church-wide after Christmas party. Uh, it was a couple years ago we decided to try to do that after the busy Christmas season. That'll be at 12 o'clock today. I believe you're encouraged to bring a white elephant uh, gift for the exchange. Uh, the more unique, the better, I guess you would say it that way. Uh, elder meeting will also be quickly following the second service today as well. Uh, if you take note, those of you that are involved with the different boards, uh, busy board meeting on Tuesday night with finance, education, and council. And then next Saturday, been asked to mention, uh, we have the youth are putting on, it's called the Beat the Blues Brunch. Uh, January can kind of be a darker time with the uh, uh, the sun a little bit more subdued during the January season, a little bit colder and so forth. And so it'll just be a time to gather together as a church, uh, to have some laughter, some music, and some food. And that'll be at 10 o'clock next Saturday here at the church, so keep that in mind. Now, there's some information on the back, too, as far as the choir to keep in mind. Those of you in choir, just take note of that as well. Following the service today, at the very end, we'll be having also the installation of officers. And so with the new 2024 year, we'll have new officers to be installed, as well as the old officers to be uh, reaffirmed, if you will. So that'll happen at the very end of the service today. Are there any other announcements that I may have missed or overlooked this time that need to be mentioned? I do want to mention real quick, uh, make sure I make sure to mention this here as well. Uh, if you think of January and February, the next two months we're going to be having a lot of activities going on here at the church. Uh, my understanding is in the month of January there's going to be a lot of work that's going to be done in the kitchen. Uh, new stainless steel countertops are going in, uh, new ovens and stovetops, and so it's going to be a busy kitchen. Uh, then kind of in January slash into February, it's going to be very busy in here uh, with new carpet, uh, paint up front, um, some tile going in and so forth. And so we're just going to roll with the punches, as, roll with the punches, if you will. And so there may be, we'll have to see how it works out. There may be a Sunday or two where we may not be able to use the whole front for communion. So we'll have, you know, we'll adapt. We'll make it work together as a church. So uh, just January and February will be kind of busy, a lot of dust perhaps in the air uh, with the improvements here at the church, uh, but we'll help you guys maneuver that together. With that in mind, our order of service today is setting one. We are the baptism of the Lord today is uh, what we're, the festival of the baptism of the Lord. We'll be hearing more about that in our scriptures and sermon here today, but before we do so, our opening hymn of invocation is hymn number 411, hymn number 411. <laughs>
ask the congregation to please stand as we turn to the top of 151. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As he called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with the intro. I printed on the inside of your bulletin, sung to the tune of C. steadfast love of the Lord forever. With my mouth I will make known your faithfulness to all generations. He shall cry to me, you are my Father, my God and the rock of my salvation. And I will make him Steadfast love I will keep for him forever, and my covenant will stand firm for him. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Behold, the Lord, the ruler, has come, and the kingdom and the power and the glory are in his hand. I have found David, my servant, with my holy oil I have anointed him. Let us pray to the Lord. For the beasts from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
pray. Father in heaven, at the baptism of Jesus in the Jordan River, you proclaimed him your beloved son and anointed him with the Holy Spirit. Make all who are baptized in his name faithful in their calling as your children and inheritors with him of everlasting life. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Congregation may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the baptism of our Lord comes to us from Isaiah, the 42nd chapter. Behold my servant whom I uphold, my chosen in whom my soul delights. I have put my spirit upon him. He will bring forth justice to the nations. He will not cry aloud or lift up his voice or make it heard in the street. A bruised reed he will not break and a family and a faintly burning wick he will not quench. He will faithfully bring forth justice. He will not grow faint or be discouraged till he has established justice in the earth and the coastlands wait for his law. Thus says God the Lord, who created the heavens and stretched them out, who spread out the earth and what comes from it, who gives breath to the people on it and spirit to those who walk in it. I'm the Lord. I have called you in righteousness. I will take you by the hand and keep you. I will give you as a covenant for the people, a light for the nations, to open the eyes that are blind, to bring out the prisoners from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from 1 Corinthians chapter 1. For consider your calling, brothers, Not many of you were wise according to worldly standards. standards. Not many were powerful. Not many were of noble birth. But God chose what is foolish in the world to shame the wise. God chose what is weak in the world to shame the strong. God chose what is low and despised in the world, even things that are not, to bring to nothing things that are, so that no human being might boast in the presence of God. He is the source of your life in Christ Jesus, whom God made our wisdom and our righteousness and sanctification and redemption. Therefore, as it is written, but the one who boasts, boasts in the Lord. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the third chapter. Then Jesus came from Galilee to the Jordan to John to be baptized by him. John would have prevented him, saying, I need to be baptized by you, and do you come to me? But Jesus answered him, Let it be so now, for thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. Then he consented. And when Jesus was baptized, immediately he went up from the water, and behold, the heavens were opened to him, and he saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove and coming to rest on him. And behold, a voice from heaven said, This is my beloved Son, with whom I am well pleased. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Congregation is asked to please be seated for a hymn of the day, hymn number 407, hymn number 407.
Jesus. Amen. About 500 years ago, Martin Luther produced, yes, he produced two different liturgies for baptism. Yes, two different liturgies for the rite of baptism. The first was published in 1523, and the second was published in 1526. Now, I mentioned this this morning because these original baptismal orders, these baptismal liturgies, might sound, yes, they might sound a little foreign to our modern Lutheran ears. Let me briefly describe these orders of baptism, these liturgies of baptism. First, at the beginning of the baptismal liturgy, the pastor would begin by coming to the child and blowing on the child's eyes, eyes on the child's eyes, and saying, Depart, you unclean spirit, and make room for the Holy Spirit. Then the pastor would pray to God that he would break all the snares of the devil. And then the pastor would say this. He would conclude that prayer with these words. I adjure you, unclean spirit, by the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, that you come out and depart from this servant of God. The pastor would then go on to spit right on his fingers and touch the child's nose and put, spear, and put spit into the ears of the child while saying, Ephatha, that is, be opened. Devil flee, for God's judgment comes speedily. Now, as we hear this, I'm sure it sounds a bit different. Maybe you're even thinking that it sounds like an exorcism. Well, dear friends, the baptismal liturgy from 500 years ago absolutely had an exorcist quality to it. You see, baptism is actually no joke. It's actually, well, as you know, it is not a fairy tale religious rite. Instead, baptism. Baptism is a hostile takeover. It is an expulsion of the devil. Indeed, in baptism, the devil is not only driven away from the baptized, but God actually snatches the baptized person and places them in the holy ark, ah, the holy ark of the Christian church. And so in baptism, a name was placed upon you. You were separated from the multitude of unbelievers. You were clothed in the righteousness of Jesus, and you received the light of Christ. Indeed, the devil was chased away from you, and you were made a member of Jesus' church and an heir of the treasures of heaven itself. To quote our reading from the Old Testament prophet from this morning, Isaiah, the text we read this morning, to quote Isaiah, In baptism, your blind eyes were made to see. You were brought out of the dungeon. And you are no longer sitting in darkness, but you are placed in the marvelous light of Christ. The marvelous light of Christ. Now, please listen very carefully. Listen very, very carefully to what I'm about to tell you. It is actually very important. Notice in the baptismal rite, Luther's from 500 years ago, as well as our baptismal rite that we use today. And also notice from the Old Testament reading in Isaiah. Notice that the Lord himself does not go into the prison cell to spruce things up, as they say. That is to say, the Lord does not come into the dark prison cell of sin, death, and the devil to spruce things up with a fresh coat of paint, new curtains, and a plush Martha Stewart rug. The Lord does not come to the door of darkness, the kingdom of darkness, and offer the devil Offer the devil honey and jams and jellies. He does not bring a fun basket of goodies to the kingdom of darkness while visiting us in the shadows of death. In other words, the Lord, he does not befriend the devil or leave us in a lovely decorated prison cell while our hearts lie in darkness. No. And this is the point. Instead, the Lord, he gives you eyes to see. He snatches you from darkness. He brings you and me out of the dungeon. And then he rebukes the devil with all of his works and all of his ways. 
baptized saints, hear this loud and clear. You are made citizens of the kingdom of heaven in that baptism. You are made a member of Christ in holy baptism. You are not of the world, and you are not of the devil, but you belong to Christ. That is certain. That is true. That is the assurance we have in the mighty waters of baptism. Now, this brings up several points. Several, actually, practical things for you and me to consider this morning. Several very, very practical things. First, because of your baptisms into Christ, first, you are no longer of the world. That is to say, you can't and you won't join the world's ways because Jesus, well, he didn't join the ways of the world as well. And so it's actually okay to be different from the world. You are baptized. Actually, my friends, get used to it. If the world is jumping, you and I, well, we may find ourselves sitting. If the world is excited, well, we may be sad. If the world is sad, we may be happy. Again, you and I belong to Christ, which means that we do not join the ways of the world because Jesus did not sing their song and dance their routines. Mark this. There is an essential difference between believers and unbelievers. The former have nothing in common with this world and with the nature and the manner of the world because there's a fundamental difference. There is a fundamental difference between light and darkness, sight and blindness, freedom and bondage. Secondly, beware of Christians who are more interested in being approved by the world than being faithful to Christ. You see, you and I, as Christians, we cannot make a deal with darkness. The interests and the goals and the purpose of the kingdom of God and the world lie in direct opposition to each other, direct opposite directions, if you will. And they can never be reconciled. You cannot ride the fence. And so those flirting with the world, every chance that they get, they will end up taking off their baptismal garments, becoming enemies of God while making their beds with the evil one. Thirdly, Jesus is very clear in the Gospel of John, the 17th chapter, that even though we are not of the world, indeed, we're not of the world, that is clear. But in John 17, we hear that we're still in the world. Keep in mind that our baptisms do not take us out of the world. When you are baptized, Your baptism doesn't zap us into heaven to avoid the trials and the persecution of the world. Furthermore, your baptism does not lead you to seclude yourself from the world by going to the the desert, to the hills, to the prairies by yourself, or to hide in some cultural monastery. No, that is not how it works. You see, as long as you still have breath, you will continue to operate, to operate in this dark world. But remember that even though you will live and work and walk in this dark world, the Lord promises to preserve you and protect you in your baptisms. And so to the point, many days you will find yourselves interacting and rubbing shoulders with your neighbors, perhaps in their dungeons. But never forget that the cell door is always open for you and that you have the light of Christ. Fourthly, The world is dark, and the world will continue to be dark. And so do not be naive or surprised when the world does worldly things. That is to say, too many Christians, they actually, let's put it this way, they they freak out when pagans do pagan things. Now, please hear me out, though. I'm not condoning evil, but instead, we Christians need to wise up. We need to sober up. And understand that bad trees will always produce bad fruit. And so we should not expect good fruit from a bad tree or get overly worked up when a bad tree produces bad fruit. The world itself, as we hear from Isaiah, as well as Christ, the world is blind to sin and locked in darkness. And so we cannot expect a shining light from darkness from a dark dungeon cell. Things will only change at the very end. They'll only change at the very end when Christ comes again to toss the devil and his cohorts into the lake of fire and then refine everything by fire. 
And finally, we must remember that this Christian life is a life of returning always back to where? Right back here. Right back to your baptisms. You see, it's like this. Those dark prison cells of the world, they can become comfortable. And so we Christians have a way of wandering out of the light, back into the prison, and back into the darkness. That is how sin works. Sin, it actually comes and it tempts us. It entices us into the shadows. It seduces us into blindness. And so without even noticing it, we can end up back in the dungeon. We can end up actually locking the dungeon doors as we settle back into a corpse's bed in that prison, in that dungeon, in the darkness. But hear this. Hear the good news. Our Lord is never content to let his wandering sheep go. He's never content to lose a lost coin. He's never content to give up on a prodigal son. And so daily, daily, you and I are called out of the world's prison cells, out of the world's prison cells, back into the light of our baptisms where we belong. Daily, the Holy Spirit, through the word, will lead us to repent of our wandering hearts. And daily, the Holy Spirit meets you and me with the words of Jesus to pronounce to you the forgiveness of sins you are forgiven. You see, the gospel comes to us. It blows open the prison's bars. It snatches us out of the dungeon and places us right back where we belong. Where do you belong? You belong right here, in this church. You belong in this baptismal font. You belong in Christ. You are the baptized, abiding with Jesus in forgiveness, life, and salvation. Baptized, clean, snatched under Christ. That's where you belong. So baptized saints, the gospel has opened your eyes. You've been snatched from darkness. That's the glorious news. You belong to Jesus. And so continue to abide in Christ, always returning to your baptisms in repentance and faith. For you do not belong to the misery of sin. You do not belong to the ignorance ignorance of prison itself, ignorance of darkness. You do not belong to the sorrow of death or the wickedness of evil. You do not belong to the world's dark dungeon, but you belong to the bright, clear day of the gospel. Christ has snatched you into the light and given you a clean conscience through the gospel. He's given you confident assurance that your sins are truly forgiven. He's given you a hopeful faith that he's coming back for you yet again at the last day. For you are the baptized. You are the baptized saints. Baptized in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. With one heart and one voice, ask the congregation to please stand and let us confess our faith as expressed in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Heavenly Father, you revealed your Son in the wondrous epiphany in the Jordan, so also you have revealed your name and blessing to us in holy baptism, declaring us your beloved heirs. Grant that we may daily die to sin and rise to newness of life, living with joy as your baptized children. Lord, in your mercy. Give comfort and relief to those who are sick, depressed, tired, confused, or in any need. We pray especially this morning for Aspen and Brian, Kari, Carl, Charlotte, Cindy, Deb, Donna, Fern, Gail, Hayden, Isaac, Jane, Jeff, Joellen, Josh, 
Lowell, Callie, Karen, Kim, Marvin, Megan, Mark, Marilyn, Marley, Miles, Pastor Jinx, Patricia, Philip, Randy, Roger, Ruth, Sharon, Shirley, Tom, and Travis. Watch over all expected mothers as well and their children, that they may have a safe delivery and be brought also to the life-giving water of holy baptism. Lord, in your mercy. O oh, merciful Lord, grant us confidence in the promises of holy baptism and trust that you will answer our prayers. When the last day comes, bring us into the joy of your everlasting life, everlasting light and life through the merits and the mercies of Jesus, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Congregation may be seated for the offering music as a way to remind the offering plate is in the back of the sanctuary. Offerings can be mailed in the church office or conducted through the church website online. Congregation, please stand for the offertory on 781. As we continue to the service of the sacrament on page 160, we continue to repentance and faith to receive the gifts the Lord has for us in his body and blood given and shed for us. If you're not a member of Lutheran Church, Missouri Senate, or one of our sister denominations, we do still invite you to please come forward, kneel at the rail, and cross your arms to receive a blessing this morning. And if you'd like to partake of this wonderful gift of the altar, please talk to me after the service about membership here at St. Paul's. We continue on 160. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times, at all places, give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, for what had been hidden from before the foundation of the world, you have made known to the nations in your Son. In him, being found in the substance of our mortal nature, you have manifested the fullness of your glory, 
Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. And the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
ask the congregation to please stand as we thank the Lord on page 164. God, the Father, the fountain and source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh, we thank you that for his sake you have given us pardon and peace in this sacrament. And we ask you not to forsake your children, but always to rule our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Congregation may be seated for departing him, hymn number 594.
At this time, I'm going to ask all newly elected officers as well as existing officers to please come forward to be installed and reaffirmed for 2024. Ask you all to line up along the rail here, please. Yeah. Beloved in the Lord, our Holy Scripture admonishes us that all things should be done decently and in order. To that end, the Constitution and bylaws of this congregation, St. Paul's Lutheran Church, has established various offices to which men and women are elected and appointed to serve. In so doing, the Church follows the example of the early Christian Church as described in the book of Acts chapter 6. The Twelve summoned the full number of the disciples and said, It is not right that we should give up preaching the word of God to serve tables. Therefore, brothers, pick out from among you seven men of good repute, full of the Spirit and of wisdom, whom we will appoint to this duty, but we will devote ourselves to prayer and the ministry of the word. You have all been elected to serve in the various positions here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. You've been chosen to fill these specific offices and positions of responsibility here at St. Paul's Lutheran Church. You are to work with the pastors that our life together in Christ may be orderly and pleasing in his sight. You are to see that the services of God's house are held at the proper times, that the word of God is purely preached and taught according to the Lutheran confessions, that the sacraments of Christ are administered according to his institution, that provision is made for the Christian instruction of young men and women, old and in between, that the erring are also admonished and discipline is maintained in this church. You are to see that the temporal affairs of this congregation are properly administered, and that the proper support is given and provided for the workers of this congregation. You are to assist in caring for the poor and the sick, in cultivating harmony among the members, and in promoting the general welfare of this congregation, and in furthering the kingdom of God here and throughout the world. While holiness of life and obedience to Christ are expected of all members of this congregation, it is especially important that you, as office bearers in his church, show yourself by word and example, to be faithful to him in service and Christian devotion. In the presence of God and of this congregation, I therefore ask you, do you accept and reaffirm the offices entrusted to you? And do you promise faithfully to carry out your duties, trusting in the Lord and conforming yourself to his word in accordance with the faith of the Evangelical Lutheran Church? If so, then answer, I do. Beloved in the Lord, you as the church. You have heard the promises of the faithful spoken by these men and women whom you have selected to serve as officers for St. Paul's Lutheran Church. Do you as a congregation promise to support them in their work, to remember them in your prayers, and to work with them to the best of the abilities that God has given you, so that he may be glorified and his work be done in our midst? If so, the congregation is asked to answer, we do. Brothers and sisters in Christ, I install and reaffirm you as officers of St. Paul's Lutheran Church in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Almighty and merciful God, enlighten and strengthen you in your offices that you may be good and faithful stewards to the glory of his name and the good of his people. Amen. Go in the name of the Lord. Be steadfast. Be immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The Almighty, the most merciful God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, bless and preserve you. Amen. Officers may be seated. Thank you. Throughout the year, I encourage you to be in prayer for our officers as well as the pastors as we continue and actually begin 2024. 
I'm not sure if you realize it or not, but in our closing hymn, do you realize that you proclaimed, you actually preached as a church, you preached a sermon to the evil one? He says, Satan, hear this proclamation. What proclamation? I am baptized into Christ. Drop your ugly accusations. I'm not so soon enticed. Now that to the font I've traveled, all your mic has come unraveled. And against your tyranny, God, my Lord, unites with me. Amen. Amen indeed. Go in God's peace. You are baptized holy saints. Amen.